world economy is expected to go around 3% in 2023 and disproportionate share is to come from asia i think uh, overall india will remain the global it leader directly and indirectly and create a huge impact on the global technology uh, sector in general we will see lot of development in ani which is called the artificial narrow intelligence and further movement towards agi which is you know artificial general intelligence that is more human like intelligence you know ai ml is the new electricity right and uh, if any organizations doesn't get it they will you know be left in darkness so they have to come out of the darkness and experience the light of this electricity hello and welcome to cio news i am kushu soni the host for the broadcast and uh, chief editor at cio news This is our exclusive interview series on Voice of CIO. We are going to be talking about trends of cloud applications, AI, and ML. And for this episode, I am very excited to invite my guest. We have Ganesh Sahai, the Chief Technology Officer at Nagaro. Our uh, Ganesh has thirty plus years of rich experience working for various brands, uh, such as Adobe, Oracle, Magic Bricks, and many uh, e-commerce companies as well. Ganesh, thank you so much for taking our time, um, joining us today, and I'm really excited to having this conversation with you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Great. So, like I mentioned, we are talking about the trends around cloud applications, AI and ML, right? So, I believe every CIO, every tech leader will vouch that cloud. Of course, it's been in the industry for quite some time now. Cloud applications, as applications, AI and ML, uh, like you mentioned, it's the new kid in the town. So, you know, maybe we can begin our, our discussions on that. And um, if you can throw some light, what are the newest cloud computing trends that you, as a CTO, look out for, Karish? Sure. So, just to set the context, you know, one of the Gartner uh, reports said that the worldwide a uh, public cloud end user spending is to reach you know nearly 600 billion in 2023 yeah and the major areas which are driving are of course ai ml but at the same time you know multi and hybrid cloud solutions iot robotics cloud security and then basically resiliency and also you know aspects of governance uh, related to esg data privacy ethics etc and it spans across you know all kind of domains now if you look at you know the evolving global economy the world economy is expected to go around 3% in 20, 2023 and disproportionate share is to come from asia and uh, in q2 2023 the top 3 vendors aws microsoft azure and google cloud collectively grew 20% and they account for 65% of the total cloud spending so you know this demand and consumption patterns of course are evolving and they basically drive the overall economy and then of course there is this evolving geopolitics and natural phenomena also but you know considering all the uncertainties there is an increased focused on one of the other trends related to cloud computing which is basically cost optimization and uh, therefore you know areas like finops are becoming very popular and also we are seeing a phenomenon called repatriation which means that the lift and shift of the on premise solution that happened in the cloud frenzy especially now there's a hard look in terms of the business value they are driving so some of them are getting back to on premise on premise however if we look forward and uh, one of the mckinsey report says that a detailed review of cloud uh, cost optimization levers and value oriented business use cases forces more than 1 trillion in run rate ebitda across fortune 500 companies as up for grabs in 2023 and of course ai ml is a big disruptor it's a new electricity penetrating various products and services in all domains whether it is retail finance banking healthcare entertainment etc so there is lot of frantic training happening around this area the organizations are looking out for identification of use cases to power up the businesses and cloud first was the mantra earlier and along with it now is the that uh, ai first you know is the additional mantra and uh, again one of the vacancy reports says that ai value creation would be 13 trillion by 2030 so these are some of the highlights of the emerging trends 
Right, absolutely, absolutely. And at present, Ganesh, what is the impact of you know cloud computing? We've been seeing cloud computing in the industry from a very long time. So, what's the impact of cloud computing on India's global growth? Yeah, that's quite interesting. Actually, given the you know the growth rate of India, and um, one of the NASCA reports uh, highlighted that cloud technology will account for. 8% of India's GDP by 2026. In fact, it has potential to add 310 to 380 billion you know, to the country's GDP by 2026 and along the way creating 14 million jobs. Now, as we just, you know, I just shared with you the growth of the major uh, public cloud vendors and disproportionate portion of the world economy is going to come from uh, Asia and India has a major chunk, right? So again, according to one of the top UN economists, so India is currently a bright spot in the world economy and is on a strong footing and it is projected to grow at a rate of 6.7% in the coming year. Now, by the way, this growth is, you know, considerably higher than that of the other G20 member countries. And we aim to become 7 to 8 trillion economy by 2030. So you can see with the 8% that I mentioned to you, you know, this is quite a substantial chunk that is going to come uh, and cloud has a big role to uh, play. So if we add up all the numbers which are there, I think uh, overall India will remain the global IT leader directly and indirectly and create a huge impact on the global technology uh, sector. And of course, you know, because of the cloud first and uh, AI first, I think, uh, you know, India is in a bright spot. <laughs> And especially yes. our technical people. Right. Absolutely, Garish. And what are the latest trends? We spoke about cloud computing. Right? So uh, what are the latest uh, trends of AI and ML in the market? AI in the recent times has gained a lot of traction, right? And uh, especially in the past uh, few years, right? The work has been going on for many years, right? Now, again, one of the reports that I read, it said that the global artificial intelligence market size is valued around, uh, you know, roughly around $137 billion in 2022 and is projected to expand at an annual compounded rate of 37%, right? And this is not just for the next year. It's going to grow at this pace till 2030. And we have seen, you know, uh, disruptive technologies, uh, GPT from OpenAI, and most of the people know GPT by way of one of their flagship products called ChatGPT. So this has been phenomenal, actually, and the likes of ChatGPT. You know, the LLM models continue to evolve. Uh, people definitely are looking for GPT-5, right? And there are interesting use cases where, you know, these technologies are getting integrated. Right. GPU market will continue to grow and data centers will grow because with this kind of a rate of growth of AI ML, we need, you know, a lot of compute power, right? That and is. these GPUs provide that actually. So I think advancement of GPU will happen. We are seeing, you know, whether it is Apple Silicon or Snapdragon or ARM, right? Or, you know, other chip companies, they are, you know, even including recently added Intel is also gearing up. And we had a very successful IPO of ARM, as you would have seen, you know, there was a 25% yeah. upside on the listing itself. So overall, you know, AIML tech is evolving rapidly, right. both at commercial level, that is at the industry level and at the academic level. So right. we are quite familiar with text-based prompts, but recently I got a little paper from academia which talks about emotion prompting. So this could be an area which we'll see evolve in the future. So we are seeing, you know, open AI tech being integrated in Microsoft technologies like Copilot, which is there as coming up as, you know, coding assistant. It will help in mails. It will help in just monitoring your windows. Google is coming up with their own uh, very interesting AI tech, uh, and they are now commercially available through Google Vertex, Duet, Bard, and there's upcoming Gemini, right? So, in general, we will see a lot of development in ANI, which is called the artificial narrow intelligence, and further movement towards AGI, which is you know artificial general intelligence that is more human-like intelligence, right? right. And along with that, we'll have to see that right kind of governance policies, you know, continue to evolve around it so that, you know, they are put to the right use. Excellent. And if you could talk about some of the emerging trends, you know, that are impacting the businesses and industries. Sure. So, uh, you know, as I said, you know, AI ML is the new electricity, right? And uh, if any organizations doesn't get it, they will, you know, be left in darkness. So they have to come out of the darkness and experience the light of this electricity. Now, in order to remain, you know, competitive, the organization has to evolve with the changing things happening around. 
And uh -huh. if you look back in the history, I'll just quote a classic example of, you know, Kodak versus uh, Nikon uh, in the camera and film industry. So Kodak was a leader, right? And they had cameras and uh, Nikon, as the electronics evolved, they evolved very rapidly in terms of digital imaging, right? And their digital cameras started to, you know, kind of be competitive in the marketplace. Whereas Kodak, you know, could not catch up that kind of a technology shift that was happening. And therefore, you know, like uh, they lost the market position. Now, when we talk about this evolution of, you know, the business and how this new tech is getting integrated, uh, let me share another example, which I recently read. So McDonald's, you know, made its most significant tech investment of around 300 million to acquire an AI startup, Intel AV, to provide a personalized, you know, customer experience using artificial intelligence, right? Now, customer experience is one area, automotive is another area, right? Healthcare is another area, right? Banking is another area. So I think one of the critical things that remains for organization is to identify the relevant use cases. And, you know, sometime back I published a, a paper on LinkedIn where I basically suggested a format to kind of go through it. I called it as AI mapping canvas. So, which helps the organization to dig into AI use cases. So, so this is very critical. The sooner the companies identify the use cases, you know, you can leverage the AI, that will be great. Now, they don't have to start everything ground up. There's a lot of tooling available. There are a lot of products available. So, and as a last, you know, data fact, uh, again, one of the McKenzie report, it says that the AI's impact on jobs worldwide would be that around 400 to 800 million jobs would be replaced. However, around 555 to 890 jobs would be created by 2030. So we will see a big disruption. <laughs> and disruption has been, you know, phenomenon in human history. Automobiles were a disruption at one point of time. Chips were yeah, a disruption. At... Absolutely. <laughs> Ganesh, uh, great, great conversation. I think good to understand from your uh, perspective and your experience. I have one more last question. How can organizations keep a pulse on the emerging trends of AI and ML? That is, of course, shaping the landscape in 2024. But how can they kind of keep up to this? So uh, they should work with companies like Nagaro and us, <laughs> for sure. But on another note, uh, yeah, they should equip themselves with the latest happening around. For example, you know, sessions like these uh, from CI News, right, uh, where we are talking about, you know, different aspects of AI or, you know, other forums, right? They should keep on, you know, keeping a tab on that. They definitely need to train the people and make them aware. Uh, people should go and attend conferences says you know watch webinars attend talks meetups subscribe yeah. to newsletters right so for example quite often i share uh, you know these um, tech related uh, items on my linkedin profile called tech track but there are a lot of other places right where people can go and uh, engage they should engage with experts not only from industry from academia also right, right. they should perform for different product and services that are coming in the uh, marketplace right and most importantly for the organizations, as they identify the, you know, use cases, they should just jump on to do a POC, right? And encourage people to use AI-based tools as assistance because, you know, the future belongs to people who adapt to technology very fast or whatever, you know, the disruption is happening. And mm -hmm. uh, I remember, you know, there was a case where um, MS Office came and um, people who had the skills to use MS Office started to get preferred over people who didn't have those skills, right? Similarly, we are in a phase now, or we have just entered that phase where so, people who are aware about, you know, AI tooling, not just aware, but how to use it effectively, right? That is going to be very important, whether it is in sales, whether it is in HR, uh, whether it is in coding, right? whether it is in teaching, right? Everywhere. So yeah. you have to be aware and, uh, you know, see how you can use it effectively. That is the future. And sure. uh, I was just, uh, you know, kind of discussing this with somebody that one of the skills of future, which is going to be very important is uh, how good you are in, you know, sending the right kind of prompts. So maybe we'll have to introduce a prompt aptitude test. <laughs> so Great. Uh, very rightly said, I think technology has always been a leveler, of course, a disruptor, but you know, after the disruptions, people have adopted because there is no choice, of course. And it has helped to level, to do smarter jobs, better jobs, right? So very rightly said, I think it is the time to start 
uh, adopting, start learning the new technology and keep up to the trends. And I would not say to stay ahead in the game, but at least to be in the game. Yeah, so that's absolutely, absolutely very rightly said. Wonderful conversation, like I said, Ganesh. Um, thank you so much for taking our time and um, joining me today uh, on this episode. And I look forward to having many more interactions with you in the future. Sure, thank you, Fishbu. You know, thanks for having me. And it was a pleasure talking to you. Same here. Thank you.